Okay, student, now we are going to review the paper one, part B. Okay, part one. So aluminium and iron are the first most abundant metal, right? <coughs> they are widely used. The electronic arrangement of iron is uh, atom is two x a two deduce the value of a. So um, you know this is a electronic arrangement. That means that um, it's a number of electrons related to number of electrons. So uh, we know that for any atoms, the number of uh, protons actually is equal to number of electrons because atom is electrically neutral. So uh, the, also the proton number equal to atomic number. I hope you still remember this. So atom, atomic number for iron, you can you can check the periodic table. Okay, so that is uh, 26, number 26. So should be Fe. 26 here. 26 proton uh, means that 26 electrons. So now we just use 2 plus x plus a plus 2 then act all together equal to 26. So you can deduce a actually is equal to 14, right? Okay, and then um, part b the bonding in aluminium and iron are similar, right? Describe the bonding of metal. Not just ask you to state, but ask you to describe. So this bonding of metal is actually a metallic bond, okay? So there are metallic bonds, but not enough, okay? The nature of bond, how come we form this bond? So metallic bonds between the metal ions and and what and the c okay of c of uh up to you okay the localized electrons okay so mainly the keywords okay metal ion and the localized electrons so they are metallic bond okay metallic bonds here metallic bond okay and um, the part c is asked you to um stay in uh, stay here just state the method of extraction so aluminium we know that uh the chain when we do when i do the review for you guys is uh we have a uh, metal relativity series okay for potassium to gold so they are divided into four different groups of uh, extraction methods so uh, from the potassium to aluminium okay actually the method is we use electrolysis of metal oh of molten oh okay of molten oh remember this molten words very important okay molten oh molten means that it contains mobile ions no water okay? so for iron is uh heating the metal on strongly with carbon right so you can write heating the metal with carbon okay then you use uh, one of the method we call carbon reduction so for silver this is the third group similar to um, mercury something like so we uh, heat just heat the metal on directly in air okay and for the gold we just use simply physical method panning we can solve the problem okay next part use some metal one property of metal which can be suitable for make the car body cars body cars what's the use body car it should be very very strong right strong is one of the properties okay or you can write it's hard. We, talk, we, we, sell, we don't use plastic, right, to make the car body. So, and then it's easy, I think, the part one. So, uh, one property of aluminum to make this suitable for making kitchen foil. So, kitchen foil, uh, what's the use of kitchen foil? You have um, the experience of uh, BBQ, right? We have used the aluminum foil for, uh, um, for grabbing or uh, for the uh, mushroom into the fire right so that it should be good conductor 
of heat, right? So that the mushroom inside the foil, aluminum foil, can be can be cooked, okay? Or you can run non poison. I saw some of your answer is non poisons. Okay, non poisons. It's okay. Okay, for part two, uh, each of foreign experience, experiment to the expected state, the expected observable change, and why the uh, the equation. So when you do the question, don't you can just like me to underline some of the keywords. Okay, right equation and expected observation change. So uh, add aqueous ammonia into copper two sulfate solution. Okay, this is a uh, form four acid base chapter. Aqueous ammonia, we know that it can it contains hydroxide ions, copper two sulfates. Copper two sulfate. Okay, I mean it's a copper two ion. They have a reaction with hydroxide ion. Just uh, the topic related to we use alkali to test the metal ions so that it will form precipitate. So that the equation is OH minus will plus CU2 plus will form precipitate. So CUOH2, right? Which is solid. So that the blue precipitate forms. Okay, this is an observable change. And for the um, part two, part B, the iron two sulfate solution to acidify potassium permanganate solution. Actually, we know that uh, when you see this acidify potassium permanganate, actually it is, we know that it's KMnO4, right? And then the, um, the main part is uh, permanganate iron and iron two sulfate, okay? You know sulfate normally we you don't have re any reaction again okay, involved. So mainly you can see oh this one is OA we know. So if one of the OA appear then the other one must be RA. That means that you need to write two equations. Okay. So firstly maybe MnO4 shrink to Mn2 plus and then you balance the equation for also plus 4H2O and H plus and 5E minus, okay? You need to check uh, the, the the charge. You need to balance the charge. Make sure left hand side and right hand side the charges are equal. Okay, second part is uh, Fe2 plus, we change to Fe3 plus, plus E minus. So you find that question, equation one and equation two. So the electron is not balanced. So that, how did you balance? So just use equation one plus equation two, right? But equation two need two times an integer that is five, okay? So eventually this overall is five Fe two plus. You can also uh, write on write on the draw paper, okay, for the process. But final this equation you need to show. Okay, 2 plus and plus Mn2 plus plus 4H2O. Okay, so this is overall just simply use this strategy and the uh, observable change you find that. So this is a pale green, this one is a purple. So reactant should be you add, you add this RN2 sulfate to this one. So original. Suppose the purple color solution will be dominant so that the solution will change from purple. So, and after that, this one is a uh, colorless and iron. This is iron free press, okay? Sorry, iron free press is yellow in color so that the solution change from purple, purple is dominant, right? To yellow, okay? So this is um, then two marks, okay, one mark here, one mark here. So here is uh, the process. You need to write two half equation for the red dots. So one for OA, another one for RA. And next one, so adding chlorine water. What's chlorine water? Chlorine water actually is Cl2Aq, okay? 
and then plus the potassium iodide, potassium iodide, okay? It's the reaction is uh, related to the halogen we have with to halide. Okay, so normally the K plus, if, if you can see this sentence, actually is also a redox. So um, potassium ion is very stable, it, it, it won't have any reaction for it. So you can check the ECS table. So we still can write two half equations, one is for Cl2, Cl2 we know that it will form Cl minus. And another one suppose is iodide. So we change to I2. So iodide is um is uh, also a um is a O is a RA, right? It, it can occur oxidation. So two and plus two E minus. Okay, and then Cl2 is uh, uh OA, it can occur reduction. So so now um Equation 1, equation 2, the electrons are uh, number are the same, so that we can directly add some of them up, sum up. So Cl2 plus 2i minus, train to 2Cl minus plus i2, the finish. And then you need to check the, um, the color. Okay, chlorine water to the iodine, iodine solution, iodine solution original is colorless, right? So you add chlorine water to that one. That means that the original color for this potassium iodide is colorless. Okay. Some of you write uh, the color of chlorine water. I think it's acceptable. Okay, but we don't know how much we add. Okay, the chlorine water. So we add to the solution. We the optional change for this solution. So solution should be colorless. Okay. Solution. Change from colorless to brown. Colorless to brown, right? So I2 is brown color AQ. So, okay, the next question is we add the magnesium ribbon to the silver nitrate. So actually, it's a um, displacement reaction. So uh, just this play out the AG and then form back the magnesium nitrate. And then, but the, the question asks you to write the ionic equation, right? So ionic equation. Can you see that? It says ionic equation here. So that we need to Mg plus AQ, AG plus, train to AG plus Mg2 plus. So the charge, it's not balanced now, so we need to balance the charge. Okay, so that is the uh, one of the that's the equation. Okay, ionic equation, and then uh, Ag formed it. We know it's a solid, so we can't. We normally we don't say silver, but we say silvery solid. Okay, silvery solid forms. You can say form on the surface. Of Mg, okay, that's it. Okay, let's go to question three. So electroplating, okay. As I said before, electroplating is this year's uh, syllabus, chemistry syllabus. So when next year we don't have electroplating, okay. Um, this is a diagram. So battery here, we don't know um uh, what is a positive side, what's a negative side, and then uh, there's a copper electrode, and then this is a star, the object, okay. So actually, according to the um, question, it's related to electroplating. That means that this star object is a metal, maybe iron, and then we want to, um, this is an electrolyte, we want to coat the copper eventually on the surface on the star, so make the star corrosion resistant, okay? So that this should be the copper coated on it. But so uh, let's see the uh, question part A. Explain why oily on the object should be removed before electroplating. Yeah, oil, the oily something, oily material. The oily material, I want to ask you whether it's contact electricity. It cannot contact electricity, right? So that this oily material, or we say oily dirt, will Hinden, you know the hinden, right? Block the conduction of elect 
electricity electricity okay electricity and some sparing electricity okay so this is uh, one of the possible answer some of you you write um it will it will block the pain painting of copper on the object is also acceptable so copper to surface is an electrolyte so what means electrolyte so electrolyte that tells you many many times okay actually is the sub is a substance but this substance it has a uh, something special right a substance that some substance that um substance that conducts it can conduct electricity right electricity um when it is in molten state right or aqueous states just remember this so only these two states for the ionic compound, then um, we say that this substance is uh, electrolyzed, so they can conduct electricity. So all the uh, number C, all the ions existing in the solution, in the solution. So this is a copper two sulfate solution. So copper two sulfate solution should be we have Cu two plus SO four two minus. So solution. So means that is AQ, right? So AEQ means it contain water. So water also contain OH plus OH plus and OH minus. So all ions. So you need to list out all the ions so that you can get one mark only. Okay? Not very really difficult. Explain why copper two ions are previously discharged during the electroplating process. Then you need to check so for um this is suppose this is um you can see at the top here copper two ion and uh, hydrogen ion so this is a cation that means that careful we will check cation so careful we will check cation so you can check the ECS the ECS I hope you still remember um like just like the Indian dance right. Go down, go down, there's a lot of difference. And for metal side, the higher the position, it has a stronger reducing agent because metal is a reducing agent. Still there's an OH minus here and CO here. And for the other part is the lower the position, it has stronger OA. So stronger OA, we have H plus here. Uh, we have Cu2 plus here, okay, and also we have MnO4 minus here. So the lower the position, it has a stronger oxidizing power, okay. We can say it's a it's a so stronger um oxidizing agent, okay. So that why eventually uh discharge. So we can explain that copper two iron has okay higher oxidizing power because it's OA okay oxidizing power than hydrogen ion so that you can get one mark okay or some of you you can also write uh, because Cu2 plus or H plus they will undergo reduction they will undergo reduction so that you can also mention that copper two ions Okay, uh, undergo uh, reduction more readily, more readily than hydrogen is also acceptable because it will occur reduction. So you just say uh, CO two undergo reduction more readily, it's also acceptable. Okay. Okay, for this part, um, part E, write the half equation of the change that occur at end node. So we know that um, this, the right hand side, let's see the this star. This star eventually the copper will coat on it, okay, the copper 
metal we call on it that means that how come the copper will call on it so it should be has the reduction okay from the electrolyte so cu2 plus will change to cu okay so that cu will call on it call on the star so reduction occur so if reduction occur that means that this side the star side is a uh, careful that another side copper electrode must be anode now ask you the anode okay of the um, the half equation so do you remember this cos cu2 plus so 4 2 minus h plus and the oh minus right this is uh, for careful I check KIN then for NO actually NR so originally it should be OH minus but due to copper uh, it's a metal as the electro as the NO electro so we have to write also CO here because the chain from K um, CA NA to do 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 uh, to CU and then OH minus so the higher the position should be stronger our oh, areas remember okay so copper has a higher position than OH minus so that copper will have the will prevent with discharge so from CU2 plus plus 2E minus okay so this is um, a hub equation so the concept of a elect your choices is very important okay and this question is quite useful and for f state observable change if any in the solution during the electroplating process so we know that and no the cu will form cu2 plus so cu electro will gradually um dissolve and form cu2 plus in the solution and this in the solution the cu the copper two sulfate solution, the CO two plus will gradually form CU. So one, you can say, you can imagine that one CO two plus form an anode, and then another CO two plus will disappear, become copper. So one here, one, one in, one out, one in, one out. That means that there's no observable change. Okay, no observable change. Because the concentration of a couple of sulfate unchanged, one one in, one out. Okay, that means that the concentration, the number of uh, the amount of the copper two ions, no change. So we, we don't we can't see any observable change. Okay, then part G. This is uh, related to the calculation, but this calculation is quite uh, strange. So it's not it's difficult for um for the year of the student. Okay, so it's known that the quite number of electrons have passed through the external circuit and then during the electrostating process calculate the mass of copper that would physically uh, be patent on the object that means that I ask you the mass of copper the mass of copper call on this star right the mass of copper so the mass of copper will call on the the object that means that we need to apply this half equation okay because this half equation related to how many coppers okay metal will coated on the star so we need to apply this half equation so 2e minus plus cu2 plus will form cu we need to ask mass of the copper of this okay so you have to so you have to um, understand what the question uh, okay asked so now uh, what's given given electrons or the number of electrons we have here so and can you see that here the vector and mass of copper and i for gradual constant so uh, by giving total number of atoms or total number of electrons or particles and give you the avogadro constant avogadro constant actually uh, you need to memorize by yourself actually okay when we study in form 4 i ask you to memorize this number so um this one so that the first step we can find out number of moles of electrons so number of moles of electrons we can find the total number of electrons 
divided by the alpha by two constant so that we can you can check the unit so mole negative one so one over mole negative one actually is equal to number of mole so the answer is 0 0.0379 okay after calculating mole so you know this question is actually is a form for related to reacting mass chapter 12 by using the known by using the known number of mole find out the unknown number of mole so after find out the unknown number of mole you can find out the mass of the unknown right then after that the second step we will use the mole ratio to find out the number of mole of the unknown so we know that electron to cu the mole ratio is two to one right and then the electron number of mole electron we just obtain and then um the number of mole or copper we don't know so we can let it be x so that you can find x actually is 0 0.0379 divided by 2 right so this this um is a number of mole of a uh, copper and then after that the question asks you find out the mass of copper so mass of copper actually is equal to the mole of a uh, copper times molar mass then you can find out the um, mass of copper so 1.2 gram okay Okay, still now go to question four. Okay, uh, this question is quite uh, strange, uh, because you didn't see um the similar question in the past paper. So um we think we are with a chlorine to explore in the sunlight. So you can see sunlight, and we think and the chlorine. So actually, this reaction is a uh, substitution. Just remember, it's a free radical substitution. The chlorine will form the uh, chlorine radical so under u we just remember this chlorine radical and then we will undergo a uh, a series of uh, substitution mono substitute mono substitution okay so for for still form four concept and then chloroform uh, is one of the products in the reaction and then all we let liquids that flow on the sodium chloride solution so uh what we what would be observed when the reaction between the um, thing and the chlorine has started okay has started so um one of actually one of the uh, observation is um here but many some of you write this answer. I still give you mark, but um, but actually, if in the DSC, if the observation is uh, repeated, as uh, appear, then you can't write again. So um, this question I mainly uh, I want you to answer because you know these two are the gas, and then after that will form. Uh, after that they have a reaction, and then means that this the gas here, like the gas here. After they have reaction means that the gas with the concentration of the gas will decrease so that the pressure inside the pressure inside the test tube should be decreased. Okay, if the pressure decrease, that means that this water level, this solution level will move up. Okay, will move up maybe here, up to here. Okay, because the pressure decreased, so the um, solution was stuck into the uh, test tube. Okay, so the ob one of the possible observation is water level in the test tube. Okay, rises. Okay, one of the possible observation. Okay, name second one. Name the type of the reaction. So I saw many of you. You don't know this these things okay the type many of you don't know the type so we have many types of reaction we have uh, oxidation we have reduction we have uh, hydrolysis we have uh, um, uh, we have a uh, substitution we have uh, dehydration so many so many okay so this type is a methane and chlorine that means it's a um, free article substitution right so we, we but for the service, we just need to write down substitution. I think it's uh, okay. Substitution. Okay. Substitution. 
And then uh, beside chloroform and hydrogen chloride, I formed it. So that means that um, Cl2 plus CH4, we will form HCl and chloroform, right? CHCl3, okay? And uh, write the chemical formula for another chlorine containing product of this reaction. So this is a mono substitution. CHCl3 is only one of the um, products. So um, this CH4 can be can substitute all hydrogen into chlorine okay or so just substitute one or just substitute two is also possible so that one of the another part should be there are many choices it should be ch uh, maybe ch2 cl2 or maybe chcl3 or this one we have already and we have a ch3 cl only only substitute one uh, only all hydrogen are going to substitute it. So CCl4, so one of them. And then the chloroform vapor, chloroform vapor, okay, um, undergoes oxidation in the standing on in air in the presence of light to form the this phosgene and the hydrogen chloride. So why the equation involve? So chloroform CHCl3, right? undergo oxidation in air that means that plus oxygen eh? and to form the force green given and hydrogen chloride okay so all you just need to translate all the formula into the all the word into the formula then you need to then you balance okay to see how did you balance it now so free <clears throat> for chlorine balance, one carbon balance, so oxygen is not balanced. So you find oxygen not balanced, only one O here, but two O. The other atom are balanced already. So right hand side one O, left hand side two O. So we just add two O for one. Okay? But we don't accept the fraction, okay? Uh, except the enthalpy change that chapter. So the other chapter we don't accept the fraction. So if uh, one half the O2, then means that we need one to eliminate the fraction so the whole equation we need to times two so the overall equation should be 2 h 2 c h c l 3 plus times two become o2 train two 2 c o c l 2 plus 2 h c l okay so we cross out this one and then based on the product in d1 so based on the products products suggest a chemical test to show whether the oxidation of chloroform has occurred the oxidation has occurred okay so if we can identify the hcl is present in the product that means that we know that there is oxidation of the chloroform has occurred right so that means that we can just test one of the products it's okay now. We just need to identify one of the products. So HCl should be much easy for identify because we didn't learn the four screen. Okay, COCl we didn't learn this, but we have learned the test for HCl. There are two methods. The first method you can um add um or you can use a uh, a, a limus paper right to test the acid well. So what is a paper? Uh? We can just simply use blue, blue. But before blue, we have to run more, one more word, moist. Okay, blue. Limus paper to test the products. Okay. If this paper string forms blue to red means it has HCl. Okay, so it can show. the oxidation occur 
Okay, has a curve. Okay, so you the another op option you can add because we know XCL, so it means that it contain if you get just add the doesn't first one the second one it may be you can add acidify silver nitrate okay acidify silver nitrate solution into the ports if C A G C L actually is Y precipitate. Why uh P why PCBD forms represent the oxidation has occurred, okay? Still positive uh, correct. Okay. Okay, number five is still a test diagram, okay? So you need to uh before the diagram so then make sure you understand what the diagram uh, tell you what kind of information. So an iron oxide, we don't know it's iron two oxide or iron three oxide. Just iron oxide is reduced to iron. Use the following setup. So reduce, we can have a uh, means that it has a reduction, right? The iron oxide will occur reduction. So carbon monoxide is one of the reducing agent. S similar to carbon. In form four, we learn carbon, right? Heating the metal on with uh, carbon, but still can be up with carbon monoxide to reduce. And then also have uh, iron put it inside and heat it up, and then this uh, combustion tube, and then after that the gas will pass through. What kind of gas will produce? So suppose, suppose this is CO, right? And then iron will reduce it, okay? And then the gas will be CO2. So CO2 will pump into lime water, then you know what happened. Okay, and then come out, suppose it's a CO2, maybe the remaining CO, okay? Here. So what type of the structure is that still what type? Sometimes ask you what type of structure, what type of reaction. Many of you 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 don't know. So make sure this one mark is very important. Okay, if you still don't know this one mark, so but other other students, they know that means that oh you get one mark lower lower than them. That is no good. Remember that. So what time the structure does the iron oxide? So iron oxide one is metal, one is non metal. So that is has a dry and ionic structure, no? Okay, so it's a dry ionic because it's ionic compound. And then draw the electron diagram for carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is very simple. Okay, very simple. But still, some of you, you can't draw it. So remember that C is 2 for electron arrangement. O is 2, 6. So O can share 2 electrons. Carbon can share 4 electrons. But here we have 2 O, so 1 C. 1 C and 2 O. We know oxygen can share 2 electrons. And carbon can share 4. So uh, how can it share four electrons? So there are two oxygen, so each oxygen they will share two. Okay? So for carbon, the outermost shell four electrons is fulfilled. Okay, and overall overall the carbon it contains eight electrons. Can you see that? Eight electrons here. In in inside. So two, four cross and four dots. And for oxygen, the outermost shell should be six, right? So we need to add four more electrons so including the um together with the uh sharing electrons so they are totally six electrons so then the outermost shell of oxygen in this molecule still eight so okay two four six eight okay and then another oxygen so this is the carbon dioxide so no difficult and then with the egg of the uh, chemical reaction state, the function of lime water. So lime water just used it to solve. The um, production of carbon dioxide, right? Because carbon dioxide can use it to test the lime water. So we put lime water in this test too. Okay, if the carbon into lime water turn milky, that means that carbon dioxide is produced. That means this 
reaction, this reducing, uh, this uh, reduction has occurred actually, okay? So the equation is CO2 plus lime water, we know it's a CaOH2. So bear in mind lime water, CaOH2, AQ. Train to uh, form term mucic diamines that form CaCO3 calcium carbonate, which is the Y precipitate. So lead to the lime water term mucci plus water, okay? Suppose this equation you don't need to balance, balance already. So carbon monoxide is highly toxic, right? So it's just one safety precaution carrying out this. So we normally we use a um we have the exotic frank um uh, frank with the inside inside the uh, film cover. So we just carry on, carry out the experiments in film cover. Okay, then it's okay. Now. Number five, you let the chemical formula of oxide is this one, Why right? the chemical equation for the reaction between the oxide, this oxide, and the carbon monoxide, so in terms of X and Y. So Fe, X, O, Y plus C, O, right? Actually, we know that it will form Fe plus C, O, 2, right? Then you need to balance. We see that's Fe, X, so right-hand side should be X, F, E, right? We have to balance the equation by using x and y in terms here. So all x and y we should we should write in front of the compound we, um, in front of the formula, okay, as the coefficient, and then y o, okay, y o. Um, so y o that means that well we have y o, but here is also o. That means that y and then 2o y and 2o so we have to write y here okay y 2o and then y c so put y here so now we have a uh, y o and y o so 2y o and y c y c so this equation is balanced already now. okay so on f 1.6 gram of oxide heated until red hot. Then carbon monoxide is passed over the heating oxide. So um, normally for this experiment, we need to heat it up the oxide first, and then you pass through carbon monoxide. Because if the oxide is not heated in uh heated heated enough, then when you pass through the carbon monoxide, the carbon monoxide will will not will not uh react with the oxide. It will directly pass through out. So that we will affect uh, the environment and also it get um it's a waste of the carbon monoxide. Okay, after heating, that's one point one two gram of iron is obtained, and then I make a formula. So um, the total gram for this oxide is one point six gram, and we know after after the reduction in irons. The mass is 1.12 gram. That means that oxygen is to be 1.6 minus 1.12 gram. So actually, it's equal to 0 0.48 gram. See? Now we can use the um, strategies. Fe. We 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 need to find out the ambient formula. So Fe and O. The first one we need to write down their mass. The second one we need to write down their mole. The third one we need to write down their mole ratio. Just remember the three step to find out the empirical formula. So one point six gram. Oh no, this is one point one two. One point one two gram and zero point four eight gram. When you find the number of mole, use mass divided by the molar mass. So molar mass of iron similar to same as the relative atomic mass of iron. But uh, molar mass we have the unit, right? So zero point four eight divided by sixteen. So um, this one is after you use calculator, it will uh trend then we equal to around zero point zero zero two, and uh zero point zero two zero two zero point zero two after calculation, and this one is zero point zero three. Okay, so zero point zero two and zero point zero three actually does. 
the ratio simplify. We simplify the mole ratio actually is two to three. So the empirical formula actually is equal to Fe2O3. Okay, done. So actually it's iron free oxide. We can actually if you you can imagine that you have learned okay in form for the reduction. So suppose is the iron free oxide can be reduced into the iron. Okay, if you know that this one is iron free oxide, then it is a hint. So you just based on this result and then find out the ratio, uh, then you get two marks. This is a strategy. Okay, number six, uh, with the egg of chemical equation, I'll learn how to carry out tests to distinguish the free gases. So uh, we use a chemical equation, okay? Chemical equation, that means that we need to use the chemical test, okay, so that we have the chemical equation, okay? So um, let's see these three gases. One is uh, CO2, another one is uh, SO2, one is NO2, right? So um, <clears throat> these three gases, only one that has the um, reducing power, that is uh, SO2. SO2 is RA. The other two gases um, um, do not have the uh, reducing power or oxidizing power. So when we see one of the gas, it has the reducing power or oxidizing power, then we just add the opposite agent. So like uh, we add the oxidizing agent to the each of the gas, then one then the uh, reducing agent we have the reaction with the oxidizing agent, right? So first of all, we need to we need to uh, pump, okay, or bubble each gas into. We can use one of our OA, uh, softly OA, put, um, put uh, dichromic ion, acidify potassium dichromic ion. You can use this formula, okay? Separately. So only sulfur dioxide turns solution from this is the OA, right? From orange to green. Do you remember? Okay, so and after that, this SO2 can cancel. Uh, and then the the relative um, chemical equation you can write. So um, we know SO2, we can change to SO4. And then 2, pi, two minus. So with this couple, you have to memorize it. And 2O, so 2H2O here, and 4H plus the right hand side and then 2e minus so you need to think about it so i i write very fast but in when you do you need to uh, think about it okay and chat one by one and then the second another this is a half equation for so2 another equation for dichromate should be cl207 2 minus we change to cl3 plus and 2 and plus 7 h2 and the right hand side is 14 h plus and 6e minus okay when you do many many times you suppose you can remember it okay how many electrons you can add but you still can double check so after these two uh so one times three plus two okay because here is two electrons here's six electrons so when you balance it you equation one in times three and then plus two so the overall so we see how to 7 2 minus plus 3 s o2 plus 2 h plus and change to 2 cl3 plus plus 3 so4 2 minus and then plus h2 okay so this is a uh, you get one mark here and you get one mark here okay so still are two points and then um after these two after these two gas so you see wow well, CO2 and then NO2, both of them are acidic gas. Or you can see all of these three gases are the uh, acidic gas. So how do we test CO2? We have 
the previous question already give you hints actually so um you can just add so the previous question is a hint add lime water to the remaining gas right then only so this only was very important only co2 okay turn lime water milky can you see that remember so and then the equation is co2 plus ca oh2 this is a lime water the formula lime water calcium hydroxide you have to minimize this one white precipitate and h2 okay so therefore the last guess should be no2 so last two guesses should be no you don't you don't need to test it out okay so that's four marks okay so all this this question have uh it make sense test one by one okay i saw i saw some of the students they test all these three guesses in used three different methods so actually it's not a good strategy the good strategy is you need to um distinguish you so you first of all you need to use one test that's as you need for one of the guests okay so that you can identify one of the guests so then you after that you eliminate so that then you need to use another task to test the remaining two guesses okay this is good strategy remember that okay now we go to number seven so uh concentrated sulfur acid is a region community found in labor laboratory right circle two hazardous labels so i tell you that um the concentrated concentrated sulfur acid it has a red color sulfur. and uh, another property is uh, oxidizing power just like the uh, di uh, the nitric acid okay dilute nitric acid and concentrated nitric acid and concentrated sulfur acid these three assets this free strong uh, free type of strong acid is is also contain the oxidizing power so oxidizing power so we remember that okay and then part b um this is um titration actually in order to determine the concentration of sample of concentrated sulfur acid 5 cm cube of the sample diluted to 1000 cm cube okay with the ionized water and then portion of 25 cm cube of the diluted sample so it means that from 1000 cm cube to 25 that means I just take out uh, 140 okay, parts of the dilute sulfur acid and then titrate it with 0 0.189 uh, mobile DMQ of uh, CNAOH using without RH. Average volume is 22.2, right? So this is a simple, not really difficult titration. So, And then explain why concentrated sulfur acid should not be titrated directly, okay? Because we, we know that well very corrosive and also um when you if you die if you titrate with the sodium di hydroxide directly and then the reaction will become very highly extremic so it's quite dangerous and then part two state the color change we know that you can look at the uh, right hand side of the diagram so this diagram is also has a very large property possibility to uh, ask you to draw during the exam so make sure you know how to draw it and draw and draw beautiful and mifar orange and an acid in the conical fast that means that the, uh, at the beginning the color of the solution should be red and after that well you when you add alkali and then after at the end point, the solution will change to orange, so red to orange. And then part C, uh, because the calculation is quite long, so I, I write it before for you. So uh, let's see, concentration of the sample. Um, first of all, we need to write down the equations, H2SO4 plus 2NaOH plus NaOH first, change to Na2SO4 plus H2O, and then you balance. Okay, so after you buy the bills, there are Na2 here. So you need to put 2 in front of NaOH and then write to H2O here, balance. And first of all, uh, by 
the given information, uh, normally we calculate, we do the calculation from the back or into the front. So we find out the number of mole of a sodium hydroxide first. And uh, we use the concentration times the volume. Volume we use dm cube so that uh, because the concentration is more than dm cube. So we got the number of mole of a sodium hydroxide and it titrated with a uh, sulfur acid so that we need to find out the dilute sulfur acid number of mole but before that we need to bear in mind the mole ratio because not all the uh, reactants they are the number of mole uh, is one to one so H2SO4 to NaOH should be one to two according to the mole ratio do you remember so here's one here's two right so one to two and the number of mole of diluted Actually, this diluted surface is 25 cm cube. We don't know it, but we know um, the number of mole hydroxide, we just calculate it. So that by using this box, we can find out what's X. X actually is the number of mole of 25 cm cube diluted sulfur acid. And then just by using course method, course method, okay, course method, and then we can uh, find out the uh, just divided by two here. We find out the number of mole of twenty five cm cube diluted sulfur acid, and twenty five is the use of portion for titration here. Okay, for titration, but originally that is uh the twenty five is from thousand cm cube. So number of mole of one thousand cm cube diluted acid, we just need to times forty times because take. We just take out 140 for the titration. Now we calculate back. Okay, so that we need to time 40. So times half thousand divided by 25. So that you got this number of mole. Then, uh, and we know that the first sentence here, this concentrated sulfur acid 5 cm cube was diluted to 1000 cm cube with deionized water. With deionized water. That means that the number of mole of uh, sulfur acid didn't change okay no matter how much the honest water you add so that the number of mole won't change so number of mole of 1000 cm cube dilute acid dilute sulfur acid is equal to 5 cm cube concentrated sulfur acid because you just add um you just add the honest water into the concentrated sulfur acid let it become the diluted solution Okay, so that the number of moles are the same, so that we use 0 0.0839 divided by the 5 cm. Because we don't find out the concentrated, the the concentration of concentrated sulfur acid, so that we divide it by 5. 5 cm is the concentrated sulfur acid, the volume. So that the answer is 16.8 mole per dm cube. Okay, if you find that the concentration is very very small or even a digit a single digit number that means that most likely you do some wrong calculation okay suppose it's more than 10 okay okay number eight uh ethene can be separated and prepared by the dehydration of ethanol so this is a dehydration reaction by concentrated sulfur acid at high temperature okay so the condition is provided later on that yeah, later on there's so one of the reaction also asks you to write down the uh, it seems in paper too so write down the um condition for this uh dehydration so you can ac actually if you read the question carefully then you know the answer okay so write the skeletal formula of the ethanol so we uh, we know ethanol is CH3CH2OH so just draw a skeletal so so one carbon here, another carbon here. So that two carbons. So CH3. Though this end point is CH3 and this point is CH2. Because it contains two more bonds. So each carbon contains four bonds. Remember that. So this is a skeletal uh, formula of ethanol. Save one uh, safety because of hitting the mixture. So uh, concentrated. So normally we uh, does one common safety precaution wear safety goggles right not goggles okay one test to show the product mixture contain unsaturated compound unsaturated compound means that 
it should be um this one right double the carbon carbon double bond so how to retest uh carbon carbon double bond we learn a lot in in form four right so we add the bomb mean this remember we add bomb mean so pr2 liquid and then bracket in organic solve it okay add bomb mean in organic solvent and then the solution change from the test to show the product container ma. the port the solution change from brown to colorless that means that if there is an unsaturated compound or cc double bond uh, compound there if we add the boom mean if you undergo the addition so that uh, the brown solution will turn to colorless okay colorless okay for part d um calculate the enthalpy change of the buff reaction by using data but the data is provided to you so um the enthalpy change of the above reaction so you need to check the above reaction is here is here okay enthalpy change of the above reaction so you need to see uh you need to check this following three equation we can use the elimination method uh, the last method of the enthalpy change that chapter topics you can go through it the last part okay and then um you can check the last e last equation can you see the ethanol here it's still at the left hand side so you don't need to change it you need to, you don't need to change the direction so right hand side right hand side and for the porter side let's see the ch2 double bond ch2 okay and water so that means that the second equation also have the correct order but the other compound the other compound seems that useless okay if, if we can eliminate them then it's good so how do we can how can we eliminate them so can you see this uh, 63063 and this is 63063 but they have the same size so that we when we add them up we cannot cancel them so how about if you put this product into the reactant side so that after we add them up they can cancel with the product side right so we need to do something for the first equation we need, we need to just change change uh, for the forward uh, become the backward so first equation we just change to uh, we just change we just, we just uh, opposite the direction so ch3 O six three plus H two O and then we we'll change to two six three O H. Okay, and then after you change the direction, the delta H the enthalpy change will also change the direction. So from negative to positive. So from negative to positive. Then, um, then seems that after you add that you sum them up okay so that you can write all uh, all the equation right now ch 3 oh chain 2 or you can write the arrow in the middle here ch2 double bond ch2 plus 2h2o and then ch3 ch2 oh chain 2 ch3 o ch3 now um if i can so this is delta h2 this is delta H3, right? Try to um, add all the delta H together. That means that sum up all the uh, equation. And then some of the equation we cancel out, like uh, this one, if we add up one, two, three together. So the right, the left hand side, this part will add up together, and then right hand side will add up together, okay? so very long box add together and right hand side still add together and then you find that left hand side and right hand side some of some of the compound they are same so like uh, c3063 cancel out when we sum them up 
benzoyl, and then water. The two H two O left hand side and two H two O right hand side. So cancel one H two O. Okay, and then the two six three O H at the port side, and the second equation is the two six three O H at the right hand side. So that we add that up, then they will cancel. So that finally, sorry, finally, the reaction remains to be this three. And this three actually is the reaction. So, and this enthalpy change, how do we calculate the enthalpy change? We, we just add them all, we just add all the delta H. So now delta H1 plus delta H2 plus delta H3 actually is equal to the enthalpy change of the above reaction. Because when, after we sum up all the equation, the remaining compound that is we need it. Okay, so that delta H1 equal to positive 23.9 delta H2 delta H2 actually is equal to negative 29.2 delta H3 actually equal equal to positive 50.7 so that the final answer is positive don't forget the positive and negative sign for F or F will be changed uh, and 45.4 kJ per mole. Okay, so actually it's not really difficult, just use the elimination uh, method. Elimination method. Okay, cancel some cellular left hand side of the right hand side with the same compound. Okay, with the same substance. Okay. Okay, let's go for the number nine. The following equation shows the reaction between the Propinol and then this is a propinol and then so propinol also is uh, one of the poor the name in the uh, the last question so uh, you know this if you can go through this paper it has lots of hints for you to answer and I will in the presence of a uh, headset the diagram show below is the instrument to follow the progress of reactions so uh, what's the instrument it contain a light source and pass through the gate and then a color filter and then go to the reaction mixture reaction mixture is this this one and then there's a detector so mainly this it contain light source and uh, color filter and detector so we know that this machine this instrument we call colorimeter Okay, colorimeter. Um, this method we call colorimetry. Okay, to use that to test the uh, to find out the concentration. Okay, of the uh, colored compound by measuring by measuring their absorbance. Okay, of the uh, colored sample when you pass through the light. So, uh, what's the physical property of the re the reaction mixture? measured by the instrument we will measure the absorbance right or well, some of you can write the color intensity it's okay of the of the uh, reaction mixture so that um, by measuring these properties so that you can know you can find out the concentration sketch a graph of a physical property against time so the y-axis is absorbance and then the um, x-axis should be time right against time and then we know that the absorbance will the color that uh, sample the absorbance will be get decrease with the time and eventually all the color may be disappear okay for number 9d we describe briefly how to show the dilute surface is the catalyst for the reaction let's okay, say so the expected result show the acid is the catalyst then we can just use the uh, control method so you can imagine that by the previous uh, questions the absorbent against time right with the catalyst the initial way of the reactant is supposed faster be if try to imagine that if i don't add the catalyst then the color change will be very very slow okay will be very slow means that the weight the initial weight 
of the um, card of the solution of the uh, absorbance will be very very low so maybe maybe like this very very low can you see that the slope which one steeper the more steeper the higher the initial rate right so this one suppose is uh, with acid this one with no acid so if I compare this two diagram you know then how do we show that you just repeat the experiment okay with doubts I think the catalyst uh, which is a dilute sulfur acid uh, the, then repeat the experiment without adding dilute sulfur acid then the initial weight of the um, decrease of absorbance will be the initial weight of the decrease okay the initial weight of the decrease will be lower will be lower okay not that fast not that high okay so this is the two diagrams just for the draft. Okay, for um, question 10, arrange magnesium, aluminium, silicon and phosphorus increase in increasing order of melting point. So when we uh, the keep us melting point, when we talk about melting point, we need to explain um, their bonding structure. So actually the hints given to you in terms of bonding and structures so, or in the molecular um, part aspects to explain so um, you need to specify which which one which um, atom or which element they have uh, what kind of uh, structure and their corresponding bondings okay and then you arrange them into increasing order so don't forget increasing that means that from the lowest melting point or boiling point to the highest okay so um first of all silicon we know that it has a joint covalent structure and then don't forget the nature the particles that is uh, silicon atoms are held together by these strong covalent bonds okay and magnesium and aluminium has a giant metallic structure because they are metal and then the metal ion and the localized electron are held together by this strong metallic bond okay it's a metallic bond uh, no ionic so and because we can't explain okay the difference between mg and al so that we need to write more sentence here aluminium has more delocalized electron more delocalized electron than mg means that the al we know that the electronic arrangement is um, 2x3 and for magnesium is 2x2 so that the outermost shell electron of aluminium is uh, larger than the outermost shell electron in the magnesium so actually the the local electron is same as the meaning of the outermost shell electron okay and then we, let's see uh, if the metal has a more the local electron that means that the metallic bond is stronger okay, than mg so the last one is uh, phosphorus it has a simple molecular structures and the molecules are held together by the weak vinyl forces okay so that by explaining this we know we can arrange their order so phosphorus phosphorus has the lowest melting point due to the weak vinyl forces held between the molecules so smaller than the magnesium has a less uh, the localized electron than the aluminium okay so aluminium has a higher has a higher melting point and then uh, this is uh, oh, aluminium and aluminium smaller than silicon okay so don't forget the increasing order okay Okay, um, let's go to number 11, yeah, it's, which is related to equilibrium. So in the experiments, two mole of uh, SO2 and two mole of O2 are allowed to react in a closed container. So um, it didn't tell you about uh, the volume of the container, okay, at the temperature. And then equation show below, this uh, reaction is exothermic. 
and when the reaction obtained the dynamic equilibrium, 1.8 mole of a sulfur trioxide is obtained. Now, uh, what is term? What's the meaning of the term equilibrium? Dynamic equilibrium. So we know that, uh, you we have we have learned the diagram before when we study in form five. Right? Just remember this: the weight, okay, and the time. So at uh, so um, the at the beginning, the product, the weight of the product formation should be from zero. And then keep increasing right and then keep unchanged that equilibrium and after that uh, at the same time because we should say the rate of reactant should be keep decreasing with time because the, the concentration of reactant keep decrease so that reactant should be keep decrease until it has a same weight with the product so that this time we say we claim that uh is the reactions obtain the dynamic equilibrium so that the forward the reaction rates and the backward reaction rates are equal okay but not zero so remember that okay the second part at uh, nine the same temperature equilibrium constant kc is given here okay the unit that means that it contains some power here so that the units not more per dm cube Calculate the volume. So I at the beginning I say that uh, it doesn't provide you the volume, only provide you the the number of mole. Okay. So remember that when we calculate the equilibrium constant, can you see Kc here? This C actually is represent concentration. Okay. We will use concentration for calculation. So that um, but the question just provide you number of mole so that we can assume the volume okay is v so that we use ic table first of all you need to write down the equation and after that write ic so ic is ice table and then i per c equal to e remember that and every every part in ice every number in ic actually is the concentration so that at uh, initial this is the initial concentration Initial concentration, this is change concentration. This is equilibrium concentration. So um two over V means that this is a concentration of SO2. La. Two over V for oxygen. La. And at the beginning there's no SO3 from this so zero. So and then there's no information at change yet. So let's see the equilibrium. At equilibrium, can you see that there are 1.8 mole of SO3 obtained? So one point x divided by v so we got the concentration of uh, so3 so now we can um can you see that this column there are three number provided in ice table so any two number provided then you can find out the third number okay so here i provided e provided so c actually you can also carry calculate it by yourself let's see so3 is a product that means that will form so we use positive so positive should be uh, if i per c equal to e that means that this this one is also 1.8 over v right but due to there is a 2 here okay so two times the change so that what time 2 equal to 1.8 la? so that it should be 0 0.9 right over v so 2 times 0 0.9 over V, then still equal to 1.8 over V. So that we know this 0 0.9 over V is the change. Okay, it's the change. So that now you can see, uh, let's see the left hand side of this change for oxygen. Because 2 to 1 here, only 1. So if 2 then times, so if 1 just times 1, so no change, so 0 0.9 over V, right? And for SO2 here, can you see 2? Two? 2 and 2, same. So still 2 times 0 0.9 over V, okay? Now, don't forget SO2 and O2, they are reactants, so their concentration will decrease with time, okay? So can you see here? The diagram decrease with time so we use negative negative and product we use positive so the i per c 
then you can find out uh, for SO2, 2 over V plus negative 1.8 over V, right? So here, so actually 2, just 2 over V minus 1.8 over V just equal to 0 0.2 over V, okay? And O2 is 2 over V minus 0 0.9 over V, so actually it's equal to 1.1 over V. Okay, so that we can convert the equation now. So Kc actually is equal to, well, don't forget the expression of the Kc that we do a lot when we learn in form 5. Okay, so 2 coefficient you have to consider. So power 2 divided by SO2, still need to power 2, and then O2. Okay, and then Kc we know that is a 7, 8. So SO2 of power square uh, power 2 is uh, 1.8 over V square and over SO2 is uh, what 0 0.2, 0 0.2 over V square times 1.1 over V, right? Go to 878. Okay, we simplify. So uh, 1.8 times 1.8 actually is equal to 3.24 over v square and then over 0 0.2 square is a 0 0.04 over v square times 1.1 over v okay equal to x7 x so we need to calculate the the lower parts so um we don't have enough space over here here okay so you can use a draft, okay? You can also draw a draft and draw the final answer there. So 3.24 over V square. So divided by something means that, so just write something here. Say dog label. Okay, um, over. Okay, so 0 0.04 times 1.1 is equal to 0 0.044. 0 0.044 over V quip equal to x7 x now simplify square divided by divided by the whole thing that means that times the opposite three three or oh, three power three go up zero point zero four 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 zero point zero four four zero okay and then equal to x7 x and then use calculator no? so this one cancel this one only one Okay, and then 3.424 divided by this one. So 3.24 divided by 0 0.044 actually equal to 73.63636 V equal to X7X. So V equal to X7X divided by answer. So V equal to 11.9. Okay, this is the final answer. We use DM crib. Okay. Because more uh, the concentration is more per DM cream, so volume is a DM cream. So this is the final answer. Okay. Okay. Let's see the part C. Um. So if the above equilibrium mixture is subject to each of the following change, will the number of moles obtained increase, decrease, or remain unchanged? Okay. So increase the temperature. We can check the um reaction. The reaction, the delta, is related to the enthalpy change, actually. Okay, if the delta H here is a negative 198 kJ per mole, that means that delta H is smaller than zero. That means that it's exothermic reaction. Uh, so we know that an increase in temperatures will favor the exothermic reaction. Now, due to the forward reaction is exothermic, so increase increase the temperature with shift will cause the equilibrium position shift to the left shift to the endothermic reaction direction okay so that the number of uh, moles of SO3 will decrease so so I hope you understand this okay so uh, you need to bear in mind the um, delta H whether it's um, greater than zero or smaller than zero it's smaller than zero means that it's exothermic and remember this sentence, increase in temperature will favor endothermic. So always true for this, for equilibrium. 
So uh, if you increase in temperature favored endothermic, that means that when you increase temperature, then the uh, equilibrium position will shift to the endothermic reaction direction. But now the endothermic direction uh, should be the backward, so that the equilibrium position shift to the left. Okay. So and then second one, uh, add the suitable catalyst. So we know that for equilibrium, uh, equilibrium um, reaction, so it is a reverse ball. Can you see that here? Reverse ball symbol here. So when the cat the catalyst will increase the weight, we know it, but we will increase the weight of forward and that of the backward to the same extent, so that <coughs> that no shift of the equilibrium position, so no change of the amounts of uh, SO three. Okay. Okay. For number three is the organic. So consider the following reaction pathway involving um. This is a uh, winter green oil, right? This is winter green oil. So the functional group we have three functional group for this uh, winter green oil. We have benzene ring. We have a hydroxyl group. We have a ester group. So ester group here. Okay, and then first step actually, uh, if you add the NO, NaOH and then heat, that means if you undergo um, alkali hydrolysis, can you see the ester? So we know the ester, we it can undergo uh, alkali hydrolysis. Okay, uh, also uh, the amide also can undergo uh, acid or alkali hydrolysis. Okay, but phenol, this one, the hydroxyl group, benzene cannot. It has no reaction with the um, NaOH, okay? So that, and after that, we add the acid, and then form the Y. So let's see what happens. Keep the structure of uh, formula X first. Yeah. So X, that means that the winter green oil will undergo alkali hydrolysis, so that it will form, if the ester undergo alkali hydrolysis, it will form the sodium salts. So this is a sodium salt, and then the other functional group change. So this one is X. So and Y. So this X will undergo. We add acid, right? We add acid. So that after you add acid, that means that this sodium salt will form bad the acid. This sodium salt will become acid again. Okay. So. This one is Y. So um, X and Y not not typical. You just need to understand the the chemical reaction of the ester. Then you know what happened. Okay. So uh, this quant this type of question uh, also many students they don't know. Not only uh, you guys, many other students. So if you can understand this, the alkali hydrolysis or acid alkali hydrolysis, uh, very important. So name the type of the reaction involved between, okay? So actually, I explained already, it's alkaline hydrolysis, okay? It's alkaline hydrolysis. Such so as a chemical test to distinguish, so we have a lot of this kind of question, right? Between the oil, this oil actually is the ester, and Y actually is the acid. Then do you know how to distinguish the ester and acid? So for acid, for us it's very convenient. Because you just add the sodium carbonate solution. Okay, into each of them. And then you know that okay, only Y, that means that the acid, right? Can react with the sodium carbonate solution to give to give a catalyst gas bubble, right? Which is uh, carbon dioxide, right? And this carbon dioxide can also turn the lime water, lime water milky. You can also write that one more sentence. So if you can write only that, I think it's okay. You don't need to uh, check the uh, ester. Okay, we go to the last question here. So um, when heating calcium ethanoate, well, this calcium ethanoate seems quite strange, strongly, 
um, acetone and the calcium carbonate are produced. So acetone is a common solvent used in the school laboratory, right? Acetone. And here given use is a free carbon ketone. Okay, ketone, we don't we know that the functional group is a carbonyl bond, CO double bond. And ketone here, free carbon one, so one, two, and three. That means that this acetone actually is this free carbon ketone compound. So and then the systematic name for this acetone actually actually is CH3, CO double bond and CH3. So what's the name for this? One, two, three. So propanol. Okay, so propanol. So actually propanol is in question nine. Okay, you can check. So that's a propanol. One of the reactant. Okay, for the calorimetry that question. So a uh, right chemical formula. So uh, for this thermal decomposition of calcium ethanoate. So actually you just need to convert all the name to formula. So this strategy I told you since form four, right? Very important. You have to know that how to convert the name to formula, convert to formula to the name. So this is the foundation of a chemistry. Chemistry, very important. So C A C H three C O O brackets two. Okay. Because uh C H three this is uh, you cannot exit uh, at the at the beginning. Can you see that? This is a if you know as it and the one of the hydrogen loose will become CH3 CO double bond OH negative. So it carry negative charge. If we are with a cal calcium ion, so how did you balance it? So the one is the two plus, another one is negative only, so that you need to put two. So make sure to balance the charge. Two left hand side is two minus right hand side two plus. So that when you write the formula, you need to hidden the two behind this evenoid, right? So that will become CA bracket six three zero bracket two, and uh, strongly heated, it will form the uh, ketone, uh, the acetone, right? So it's a CH three CO double bond name is CO CH three. You can write the formula. You can write the chemical formula only. And calcium carbonate, and then you double check the um, whether it's balanced or not. Okay, so one CA here, and two CH three. Because two here, so two CH three, and two C, and four O. Okay, so here two CH three, and one CA, and one C and one C. And one O and three O, so four O. So you don't need to balance this equation. Balance already. Okay, and then acetone can be converted into isopropyl alcohol. So isopropyl alcohol, I, I already give you the the chemical name, okay? Propane propane two O. Actually this isopropyl alcohol is uh, from the uh, hand satellite. Okay, that's very commonly used in this uh, this uh, period, okay? And uh, so draw the structural formula of the isopropyl alcohol. So I already give you this one. So propane two O. So one two three. Okay, very big hints in the DSC. I'm, you may not give you this hints but for the mod exam, I just give it to you. So um, actually you can find from ketone. Okay, because it undergo reduction. Ketone is CO, this is acetone, CH3, CH3. So undergo reduction, this CO double bond will be converted into alcohol. So the propane 2 o is 2 o here. Propane, so free carbon, so the other. H. Okay, the other H, so this is propane 2 o and stay the reagent that required for the conversion. So there's a reduction I just say before. We have two reagent. So we normally we use this uh, lithium aluminum hydride. Normally we use this and this. And after that we use dry either. Second step is uh, H press. Okay. You can also use the another soft reagent. Uh, reducing regions or so sodium borohydride. Okay, this one quite soft. Okay, 
Okay, but only but only can reduce the aldehyde and the ketone. Cannot reduce the acid. But this one can also re uh, not only we have a ketone and LDR, but also can reduce the acid. Okay, now which compound acetone? Acetone actually is CO2 here, right? Right again. And then isopropyl alcohol is a C containing OH. Okay. So which one has a higher boiling point? So higher boiling point, melting point. Do you remember in the previous question asked you to explain in terms of structure and bonding? So here still. Okay. But these two um they are molecules, they are organic compounds. So the both of them they have simple molecular structures. That means their um force are the intermolecular force. But intermolecular force we have two types, right? Just remember? One is weak vernal forces. Another one is hydrogen bond. So now you can check these two compounds out. Which one has a hydrogen bond? Which one do not has a hydrogen bond between the molecules? Okay, so not very really difficult for hydrogen bond that uh, if the molecule they will contain three the, uh, the bonds, that is a OH bond or FH bond or NH bond, right? So if they have, they contains this kind of bonds, that means that the molecule most likely they will have a, they will have a hydrogen bond in between. So for ketone, that means that the acetone, we don't have this free one of the these three bonds. But for the isopropyl alcohol it have it contain this. Okay? So that we can explain that. The acetone a C T O N E right? The acetone molecules, don't forget the molecules are held together by weak vernal forces only, right? Weak vernal forces. Wow. This isopropyl molecule. Don't forget molecule are the nature of the add particle you have to mention. The isopropyl molecules are held together by hydrogen bond. Okay, so we know that hydrogen bond are stronger then the weak, the Randall force. Okay, so isopropyl, isopropyl alcohol has a higher boiling point, okay? Okay, so that's it for this paper one. Okay, I hope you understand. So try to um keep keep uh keep watching this uh video. If uh, one of the question you don't know, I will upload to the YouTube, and then you see uh, which question you don't know, then you click that question. You need to you don't need to watch from first minute to the last minute. Okay, just focus on the question that you don't know, and then watch. Uh, a few times for it. Okay, if you still understand, contact me. Okay, thank you.